Who is it's your girl Onyx Isis coming to you with another book review and today I am reviewing the book They Were Her Property White White Women as Slave Owners in the American South by Stephanie E. Jones Rogers. As always, I review these sort of books from the perspective of African internationalism. And African internationalism is a socialist theory uh, developed by Chairman Omali Eshetela, who is the chairman of the African People's Socialist Party. It explains the world and how we can get free. It is a theory that helps us understand how worldwide system of capitalism came into existence from the exploitation and colonization enslavement of African people and that it helps us understand that if that was the reason why capitalism came into existence then obviously our liberation and freedom will destroy the worldwide system of capitalism and in, and in turn destroy um, all oppression and exploitation um, when we uh, organize for African workers state um and so with all that being said i go into most of these book reviews i haven't um i haven't reviewed fiction yet so most historical political book reviews from the perspective of african internationalism and uh i'll get to right to it so again i'm reviewing they were her property i got it on amazon it's on my kindle app on my tablet they were her property, white women, hold on, I have to say it right, white women as slave owners in the American South by Stephanie E. Jones Rogers. First of all, um, you know, I, I went into reading this book already understanding that white women, hold on, white women were not absolved in the process of enslaving um, and benefiting from the enslavement of African people in the United States. So there was a lot of things that I took to read um, that would reconfirm for me, you know, the role of oppressor nation white women and how they benefit from enslavement. And that's what you'll read as well. There's um, the way that the book is written is just telling uh, historical accounts of uh, individual women um, and, and specifically how they participated in the enslavement, how they um, benefited from the enslavement of African people. I think what the book also attempts to do um, is show that uh, at a time when white womanhood was um, somewhat protected by white men and that um, the expectation was that white women did not have their own agency because of the patriarchal systems that Europeans came with into the um, the in, in their creation and their settlement of this particular land um, that we live on today. That um, that white women did not have a lot of um, ways that they can participate in the oppression, and I think that for a lot of feminists, this viewpoint is carried through in that that white women, uh, white European women have always, um, for as long as they could remember, experienced patriarchal oppression from white men. And what this book attempts to do is to show that in many instances, even underneath patriarchal domination from white men, white women still had power over their enslaved uh, African slaves. Um, they still benefited from their slaves. And even in the cases where their slaves were their sister or brother, um, how they benefited from that relationship, that parasitic relationship of enslavement. So uh, we we uh, read this or we reviewed this in a book club, the Harriet Sauters book club that we do every month for the African National Women's Organization. We did this like before the COVID. And uh, we had a couple of studies around this book and the, the, the overall consensus around the book was that people already understood that, that relationship and that what this book provided was um, some concrete examples, specific historical documents and references of white women and, and those sort of relationships. And even in the cases where white women, um, it also... I don't know if it's this book, I might be mixing it up, but um, but it's also exploring the whole relationships, the parasitic relationship, romantic relationships, I can't even call it romantic, parasitic relationships that white women had with their male slaves, 
male enslaved Africans and how um, uh, the situation with them was very different from how um, African women, African enslaved women and their um, relationship, and I don't use it as a term of endearment or a term to wipe out the obvious oppressive <laughs> situation, but the relationship in terms of one to another, um, how white uh, oppressor nation men um, experience their relationship with um, African enslaved women. So I thought that was really intriguing. Um, it even explores white girls, white girls, young girls, and how they were taught at the very um, uh, young age of how to treat adult um, African people, how to treat um, children, and also in some instances uh, where white children were um, were playing with enslaved African children that that relationship did not have meet that relationship did not have any impact on how they treated them as enslaved persons once they grew up and and everyone knew their place based on this so I think overall they were her property um, just really provides a historical example to black women to white women to everybody involved about the benefits that white women experienced because of enslavement um, when it was happening and currently I think you know I think when we when we look at when we read these historical documents or when we read these historical accounts of what was happening back then and people's like, oh, that happened 500 years ago or 200 years ago. But the thing is that we're not like outside of this relationship anymore. Like we're still in it. You know, it's just transformed into a different sort of thing. You know what I mean? So we, you know, as an African internationalist, we understand that we're still domestically colonized within the boundaries of the United States and that white women, just like in the in times of enslavement, that they still have hold a position um, under which they still have power to execute their white womanhood to um, oppress and encircle and exploit African people. And we've seen that with the Karens and the Beckys and they're calling the police and um, and just an overall sense of, you know, this the sense that white women don't have any idea about what they're they're doing. <laughs> and I think. Um, there was an article that was written, I think, in Forbes magazine online, and they said, let's talk, and the name of the article was, let's talk about the real, the white nationalists that nobody talks about, the women. <laughs> and it's sort of like, um, you know, this, this unspoken thing that for some reason, because of their gender, they get, um, they, they are more, what's the word? Uh they are more excused for their white nationalism, if that makes sense. Like it's it's easier for us to kind of pass it over when the most vigilant of white nationalists are white white women. Um, it's sort of like that movie Get Out when um, when you know you know there was this you know this African who was involved with the, a white woman and went to his white woman's family's home and the mother she was the character for me that. Um, really turned it off for me because here we have this very ap amicable, soft-natured, good tone, never rose to, raised her voice, white woman who was just very understanding but was a white nationalist that entrapped African people and stole their bodies. <laughs> so that's essentially, you know, the, the, the theme here in this book. So I would, I would recommend for those of us who need some, uh, some further proof and some references that they can speak out and quote, um, to read, they were her property. However, I don't, I don't necessarily think that it's something that African people need to read. Um, um, as a matter of fact, I think that it's kind of a masochistic book um, um, for us to read. And, and a lot of the women in, the, in our book club thought it was the same, you know, much of the same sort of thing of rereading and rereading um, stories of our oppression. Um, but if you like that sort of thing, if you like to explore historical references, and if, if you really are intrigued by white women and their role in the enslavement and uh, abuse and uh, oppression of African people, definitely pick up They Were Her Property. There's another book that I'm going to read um, uh, through, Engendering Whiteness, and it talks about white women 
in Europe, um, I'm sorry, in the, um, I think in Louisiana and the Caribbean and their role in enslavement. And I'll definitely look forward to reading that book and, and sharing my thoughts with you. So, um, as always, I look forward to doing another book review. Sorry, so long it took so long between reviews, but uh, I plan to be a little bit more um, uh, thoughtful of the time that I spend with you all. So uh, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, definitely uh, share below and we'll talk soon.